We're here in Lake Como. Now, despite it not being the largest lake in Italy, it is the most popular because it's so beautiful and because it attracts star-studded visitors. George Clooney had a summer home here. Star Wars and James Bond have both filmed scenes here. And those famous faces and modern aristocrats come every year to lap up those mountainside villas and the spa culture that dominates the lake. What we're hoping to find out is if it's all beauty or if there is some substance behind all of this style. Hello. And welcome to today's episode. I'm Danielle. I'm going to talk some shit for a little while. I've got my professional blazer. <laughs> We're in Como Town, which is the biggest stop on the lake. It's got the waterfront, but it also has an expansive city just off of it. It's got piazzas, museums, kebab shops, sushi, hostels, all the things that make it super accessible. Also, this is the home of Alessandro Volta, and his name might ring a bell to a few of you. This is the dude that invented the battery, and the first ever battery was actually built right here in Como. And the battery being so important to the world of electricity, his name was used to describe the measurement for potential difference, the volt. Some behind the scenes information. Here, Volta Museum, Coca Cola. I sidled up to Tyler, look at this beautiful background, and what did you say? Well, when I was in high school, I actually invented the concept of the wireless charger. Fucking here we go. Like, I obviously didn't paint it or like didn't actually put any paperwork <laughs> oh, together. Italy. It was like a thought experiment. We learn about like magnetics and electromagnetics uh, in physics. And I was just thinking, well, if you could generate a little charge in a little coil, you could generate a little charge in another coil when you put them together. And why can't you charge off of that? But also phones weren't big when I was in high school, so like something that needs such minute charging wasn't really there at the time, so it was worthless. But there you have it. Heard it here first. Tyler Sims invented the wireless charger. You heard it here first. Tyler's full of shit. This is not local by any means. Or Nutella. Sure. And, and fried dough is quite local. Oh shit yeah. <laughs> oh shit yeah. The Daniel sign that it might taste good. Oh shit yeah. Is it? Some real yeah, you say it all the time. It's your go-to <laughs> description of food. Oh shit yeah. Oh shit yeah. Getting to Como by train is really easy from Milan, but getting to the rest of the spots on the lake is a little bit more troublesome. You have to get a ferry from Como up to the north of the lake but they're not always running. We're here in the off season and there's a big patch in the middle of the day where there's no ferries running from the top to the bottom of the lake. So we've had to drive down here from where we're staying on the lake. Varenna is famous for being the most beautiful of all the towns on Lake Como. It's really close to the waterfront. It's got really nice little narrow streets to wander down and take a bunch of photos. There's little else to do here but eat and sit and relax and it's truly spectacular. It holds a special place in my heart because my friends got married here nearly 10 years ago. I just have to wonder how much um, Instagram and places like this becoming so accessible and no longer hidden gems, the impact of that. I remember it being so much quieter. It was still super expensive. Um, I had to share a bed with another of my friends so that we could afford to stay here, but it was really, really quiet. Now, coming today, I wanted to come and have a look and send some photos to my friend who got married. Um, happy anniversary, Stace and Paul. 
Um, it costs 10 euro per person just to come out into the grounds to sit and have a coffee. It's still very much worth the trip, I think, to come over and take a peek around, but I'm just shocked about how much it's changed. With Menagio, you get the best of both worlds. You get that small inside charm that you get with some of the other lakeside towns, but you also get a bit of a cityscape as well with a few more things to do. It's got a wide scape in terms of lakeside frontage. There's actually a beach you can go to just down here, and there's a putt putt golf place that you can go to. Um, and of course, with so much lakeside frontage, there are restaurants absolutely everywhere. But what happens here is because of that city element to this place, you lose a little bit of the charm that you get in Bellagio and in that other place. Verena. Verena. <laughs> Lake Como is so close to the Swiss border, as well as being surrounded by snow-capped mountains nearly all year round. And this really reflects in the local cuisine. The main foods that you'll find here are polenta with buckwheat, with lots of stewed meats, as well as risotto with perch. The perch is indigenous to the lake here. really salty and the sweet, the balance, oh, and that is so creamy. Mmm, lard. It's horrible. <laughs> I don't know that that's right. That's the knife. What are you doing? That's ridiculous. You an idiot? I'm trying new things. By eating off the knife. I'm gonna do something with this knife in a second. That's really good. It's really creamy and fresh. That fish is obviously very, very fresh. I like though, we're doing some extra research about the perch. I was like, is it completely indigenous to this lake specifically? And it's not. It's been um, imported, it's spread around the world, and it's a threat to the local species in Australia. And New South Wales has claimed that European perch is a noxious present in the state. So, extremely expensive here. Pest, Pest at home. home. Pest at home. <laughs> It's important to note that when you come to Lake Como, it is not as straightforward as you might think getting around the lake. The ferry system is not on Google Maps like it is in places like Lake Garda or where we came from in Venice. You have to walk down to a station and pick up one of these paper bad boys. The old ancient way of doing things, like scribed on a stone. So we stayed in Bellagio while we were on the lake, which is really fortunate because it's part of a trio that the ferries go to pretty regularly throughout the day between Bellagio, Menagio and Varanasi. No, Verana. V Verana? Verena. Verena. And if you stay at any of those three places, it's going to link you up pretty well across the lake. So the other thing about this system is you have to buy the tickets in person at the booth. If you're going to be traveling three or more times on a ferry, it's probably worth just getting a day pass, which allows you to hop on and hop off these ferries as much as you want all day long. The most touristic of all of the stops, Bellagio is popular for its shopping and for its spas. But the most basic treatment will set you back a couple hundred euro as a starting point. So you need to be cashed up if you decide to come here. It's a very popular day stop. But at night, the place is all yours.
today is our last day in Lake Como and it's a nice time to reflect. Danielle and I's third date was to a movie where we watched The Burnt Orange Heresy. It's a tiny little film, awesome little film, set in Lake Como. So this place has kind of always been on the list and it's kind of nice getting back to where it all began by coming here to Lake Como. As an afterthought, we've stopped here in Lecco, right on the bottom of Lake Como, on the other foot from Como. Um, it's probably the least accessible by ferry of all the major stops on the lake. It's quite a pretty town, but it's a bit more of a metropolis than anywhere else. So you don't really get the same vibe, a bit like Como. Uh, we drove here by car from Bellagio, 35 minutes. Uh, but just to let you know, again, not super accessible by ferry. So for all the ferry services on the lake, this is all there is to Lecco. So Lecco may be not the best stop spot to stay. Cuba. There's plenty to see around Lake Como, but if you want to do anything, prepare to drop some cash. Whether it's going to the villas, the spas, the shopping, eating out, private boat hire to get around if you're not up to the ferry, those experiences are just not accessible for the budget traveller. But if you're happy meandering around, having a little look, or sitting down for 45 minutes at a time to take drone footage, You can't go wrong. If you are coming and you don't know where to stay, we recommend that you pick one of the trifectas on that great ferry route, whether it's Bellagio, Menaggio or Verena. Those are heaps more accessible and super beautiful. Click here if you want to see our Lake Garda video and see how it compares. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Never Not.